Okay, welcome. Uh, thanks for joining us this morning. Uh, this summer season, travelers are expected to fly uh, U.S. airlines at the highest level in six years, including some 325 travelers a day who will fly U.S. airlines to international destinations. These numbers are very encouraging, but equally important, the enormous market they represent demonstrates why foreign airlines are going to extreme new measures to gain access to U.S. international passengers. The Airline Pilots Association is a staunch proponent of free markets. As long as the rules of competition are level, as long as the rules are fair, they're uniform and they're enforced. Free markets don't work if competition isn't fair. The fact is that many foreign airlines do play by the rules in competing for international passengers. In the recent case of Dream, Dreamjet, but also for many other cut and dry applications by foreign airlines that enter the U.S. market as a result of the open skies policy, the Airline Pilots Association has no objection. U.S. airline workers, whom I believe are the best in the world, flying day in and day out in the safest airspace in the world, welcome the opportunity to compete. We are about competition and we welcome it. And you can take it from me that we will compete with unmatched determination and an all-out commitment to winning. So I want to be clear again and emphasize this point. We are all about competition, so I say bring it on. That said, some foreign airlines do business with enormous amounts of state support. And this isn't fair competition. Still others have concocted underhanded business schemes to skirt their national laws and gun, gain an unfair economic advantage in attracting international passengers. And this is not by, and this is not playing by the rules or any rules. In an already hyper-competitive marketplace, the evidence is rising fast in the form of historic aircraft orders and billion-dollar profits that the threat from foreign airlines that do business with unfair competitive advantages is becoming more real every day for the U.S. airline industry. And this puts U.S. airlines and their employees in survival mode, truly in a fight for our industry and for our livelihoods. In leveling the playing field, the policy white paper that ALPA is releasing today during this media briefing, and that more, and that more than 100 airline pilots will deliver today to Congress, we make clear exactly why and how our government leaders must act to make certain U.S. airlines have a fair opportunity in the marketplace. If Congress and the regulators don't act now, the U.S. airline industry as we know it will disappear. And here's what I mean. Right now, more than 110 U.S. Open Skies agreements allow other countries' airlines practically unlimited entry into the U.S. marketplace. Since the United States first began its policy, the U.S. share of international wide-body fleet has dropped from 45 percent at the high to 17 percent, and that share is forecast to shrink to just 5 percent by 2025. This prediction should keep all of us in the U.S. airline industry awake at night. Given this crisis, and I believe it's truly a crisis, U.S. government leaders must stand up for U.S. airline workers for our industry, for our companies, that supports the national defense and that they drive the economic growth of the United States. In 2010, ALPA was front and center in developing a standalone labor article which had the vision and was in the U.S.-EU agreement that anchored the value of high labor standards. The recent Norwegian Air International business scheme to avoid Norwegian labor laws by moving its long-haul operations to Ireland, where they don't fly, shows just how urgent it is for the U.S. government to strictly apply this labor article. I hope you've seen our Deny NAI ads, maybe in the metro or on a bus on the way over here. NAI is seeking an in-run around global rules to compete on an unlevel playing field against U.S. airlines and our employees. And this scheme would establish a flag of convenience, the same type of model that devastated the U.S. maritime industry. 
Alpa, along with tens of thousands of others and more than 100 members of Congress, have raised concerns or call and called on Transportation Secretary Fox to deny NAI. While rejecting NAI's foreign air carrier permit application is imperative, it's clear that the United States must make permanent policy corrections to prevent any similar attempt to tilt the playing field against U.S. airlines in the future. U.S. leaders must scrutinize key existing and future open skies agreements to be certain they advance the value of high labor standards and safeguard U.S. airlines' ability to compete. U.S. government policy must identify unfair state-created competitive advantages and account for state support of foreign airlines to ensure U.S. airlines and their workers have a fair shot at winning international passenger business. Finally, let me take this opportunity to once again state ALPA's unequivocal position that no pilot shortage exists today. The shortage is of jobs that offered qualified pilots competitive wages and benefits and a solid career. I'm deeply troubled that some U.S. airlines are attempting to use this contrived pilot shortage as an excuse to roll back the safety gains realized with the new pilot fatigue rule and first officer qualification requirements. The fact is that these new safety requirements were developed with input from industry, labor, and government, all at the table together. And the Regional Airline Association was the co-chair of the First Officer Qualifications Aviation Rulemaking Committee, and the airlines have had years to prepare for their implementation. Today, the Airline Pilots Association is stronger than ever. With the welcome addition of JetBlue flight crews to our ranks, we're getting even stronger in 2014. The strength of our union is rivaled only by the strength of our resolve to fight these unfair practices and to capitalize on the opportunity presented by a fair marketplace. I'm pleased to be joined today by three ALPA pilots representing the mainline, the regional, and the cargo sectors of the U.S. airline industry, each of whom will talk about other U.S. government action needed to level the playing field. Take me at my word when I tell you that every U.S. airline flight crew member, regardless of the type of aircraft that they fly or whether they carry cargo or passengers, is in this fight. We're in it for the long run, and we're in it to win. We're going to win a fair marketplace for U.S. airlines and their workers. Now, I'm going to introduce First Officer Jenny Winter, who flies for Delta Airlines and represents ALPA's mainline members. Jenny. Thank you, Captain Mo. It's a real pleasure to be here today representing Alpha's mainline pilots. My name is Jenny Winter. I'm a first officer on the Boeing 767-400 at Delta Airlines. I'm based at JFK. I've flown for Delta since 2007 as an airline pilot and an Alpha member since 1999 and been a pilot for 20 years. I've flown on the regional routes, domestic routes, and I currently fly international routes exclusively. I've flown to more than 32 countries and I currently operate aircraft on some of the highest frequency international routes. The ability to compete on these routes is vital to maintaining the strength of our U.S. airlines. This competition must occur on a level playing field. Looking to the future, I anticipate working 25 more years as a U.S. airline pilot, so I'm here to speak to you today as a vested professional in the industry. Alpha's vision for a stronger U.S. airline industry in 2014 hinges firmly, as Captain Moak said, on the U.S. government's ensuring fair competition for U.S. airlines. At the foundation of our white paper lies the U.S. government's need to do more to make it attractive for cons customers to choose to travel on U.S. airlines. At the same time, U.S. policies can't continue to harm the U.S. airlines' competitiveness. It's a delicate balance, but ALPA believes firmly that by working together we can strike it, and our industry's survival depends on it. Any successful effort in this direction starts with reducing taxes and fees. The aviation industry leads all other U.S. industries with 17 unique federal taxes and fees, which puts U.S. airlines at a major competitive disadvantage. The United States should reform its aviation tax policy. As part of this effort, the DOT should immediately conduct an independent evaluation of the federal aviation tax burden on passengers and on U.S. airlines. 
Similarly, the DOT should not issue new consumer regulations except those concerning safety until it reviews existing protections, has its findings independently reviewed, and surveys airlines about the cost of compliance. Flyers should also know what they're paying for when they buy a ticket as part of an improved customer experience. ALPA backs the Transparent Airfare Act of 2013, which would restore transparency and allow federal taxes and fees to be shown in the ticket price. To this point, the proposed rule released by DOT on May 21st sounds consumer focused, but it may actually lead to less transparency, increased airfares, and threaten U.S. aviation jobs. Long lines and the loss of privacy tarnish the travel experience for U.S. airline passengers. The United States must restore the luster if we are to keep our customers and attract new ones in this hyper-competitive marketplace. Our government should reinforce its investment in risk-based screening, such as known crew member, pre-check, global entry, and the U.S. Customs and Border Protection Trusted Traveler Program. All use federal security resources wisely and improve the experience. While ALPA supports the U.S. Customs Pre-Clearance Program as one action to cut long lines here at home, these facilities should benefit U.S. passengers and U.S. airlines, not hand an unfair advantage to foreign airlines. This is clearly not the case with the pre-clearance facility in Abu Dhabi, an airport to which no U.S. airline flies. The government must reform its CBP policies to ensure that pre-clearance operations do not have unintended economic effects on U.S. airlines and jobs, and that all U.S. airport clearance facilities are adequately staffed. As mainline pilots, we've invested our careers in our carriers. We are fierce competitors. We want the U.S. government to give us a fair economic fight so that we can build a future in which our U.S. airlines shine. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Captain Mark Harrison, who flies internationally and is a member of FedEx Express Pilot Group. Thank you, Jenny. <clears throat> I'm Captain Mark Harrison, and for 25 years, I've been a pilot for FedEx. I currently fly the Airbus A300. One level of safety and security. It's a motto we've been celebrating for more than 20 years. And while the concern and the concept have been at Alpha's course since our union's beginnings, in 2014, we are doing more than ever to drive our industry in that direction. Today, with the release of ALPA's leveling the playing field for U.S. airlines and their employees, ALPA delivers to Congress once again our call for lawmakers to direct the FAA to amend FAR 117 and to work with the cargo industry to include pilots like myself under the same fatigue standards as the passenger airlines. The National Transportation Safety Board's recent investigative hearing into the tragic all-cargo aircraft accident that occurred during approach to Birmingham Shuttleworth, uh, Shuttlesworth International Airport in 2013 highlights that pilot fatigue remains a safety factor in the all-cargo airline industry. Our union resoundingly supports Safe Skies, the Safe Skies Act, which has been reintroduced in this Congress and would achieve ALPA's goal of applying fi pilot fatigue rules to all pilots who fly cargo, thus propelling our industry a critical step closer toward realizing one level of safety. As well, ALPA is urging the United, States, the United States to seek a new international standard for flight and duty times that will enhance aviation safety around the globe and level the playing field for all U.S. airlines that compete globally, regardless of whether their primary source of revenue is the carriage of passengers or cargo. Along the same international safety theme, as an ALPA member who flies cargo, as opposed to passengers, I am keenly aware of the serious danger posed by the unsafe shipment by air of lithium batteries. The United States must adopt more stringent regulations regarding the shipment of lith lithium batteries by air and harmonize them with the current ICAO standards and recommendations. Finally, on the subject of safety, airline pilots and indeed cargo shippers and passengers alike are looking toward the U.S. government to invest and more fully engage in the implementation of NextGen. By securing consistent, long-term NextGen funding, promoting cooperation among international partners, and involving stakeholders in establishing standards and minimum levels of equipage, 
our country can promote greater safety and efficiency in the U.S. national airspace system. And on a final note, I would like to underscore the urgent need to make certain U.S. carriers can fairly compete internationally. While passenger airlines are on the front lines right now, foreign airlines are also leveraging their home country's commitment to their success and enjoying wholesale economic and policy support while they build their air cargo routes, their freighter fleets, and their air cargo infrastructure. Cargo pilots are equally single-minded in our resolve to see the U.S. airline industry thrive in the global marketplace and to protect American jobs. And now it's my pleasure to introduce Captain Brendan Cantwell, a member, uh, an ALPA member who flies for Air Wisconsin. Thank you, Mark. I'm Brendan Cantwell, a pilot for Air Wisconsin and ALPA member since 2006. As a pilot for a regional airline flying to domestic and short haul international destinations, it is clear to me that the U.S. airline industry is being placed at a severe competitive disadvantage by its own government. It is time for our nation to level the playing field and give U.S. carriers a fair opportunity to compete, which will help us maintain the U.S. aviation industry as the model for the world. Today's surprising reality is that foreign airlines have an unfair economic edge in the marketplace. This advantage could have a direct effect on the regional flying I do, as the majority of the passengers I fly are connecting to our partner airlines' long-haul international destinations. When mainline carriers are unable to compete on international routes due to unfair competition, they are forced to reduce service not only to international destinations, but also on domestic routes, impacting regional carriers like mine. Make no mistake, every segment of our profession is affected. Whether the unfair economic edge is not available to U.S. airlines as an export-import bank financing or simply impossible to obtain under current U.S. policy, the economic danger is real for U.S. airlines of every size. The U.S. Export-Import Bank allows foreign airlines to buy new U.S. manufactured airplanes with below market financing rates subsidized by U.S. taxpayers. These foreign airlines, often subsidized by some of the world's wealthiest countries, then turn around and use those airplanes to compete against U.S. airlines, which are not eligible for XM bank financing. Considering that hundreds of bank-financed wide-body aircraft are being used by foreign airlines are on routes that are, have been, and could be served by U.S. airlines, it is no surprise that our airlines have been forced to withdraw from or not enter those markets. This clearly affects the jobs of U.S. pilots who fly international long haul, but the trickle-down effect will also jeopardize the jobs of regional pilots, not to mention the multitude of U.S. workers who support our airlines. To safeguard the U.S. airline industry and all the jobs it provides, and as directed by Congress, the administration should immediately negotiate with the four European countries with export credit agencies supporting Airbus wide-body aircraft sales to eliminate export credit agency financing of all wide-body aircraft. Also, the, export, the economic impact studies that Congress requires the XM Bank to perform should not be rubber stamped but should rigorously evaluate wide-body aircraft financing deals before they are granted to ensure that U.S. jobs are positively effective. This can be achieved without putting any financial risk on Boeing and its tens of thousands of employees. ALPA believes both are a strategic national asset for U.S. defense and economy. Similarly, current U.S. foreign ownership and cabotage restrictions must be maintained to safeguard U.S. jobs the national defense, and the airline industry's contribution to our economy. As a result, the U.S. Trade Representative should inform all trade or services agreement negotiating partners that air services are not negotiable in general trade talks, including the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, and that international traffic rights will continue to be negotiated by the Departments of State and Transportation in separate air services negotiations. The fact is that our own government's policies, such as Exim Bank's wide-body financing decisions, add up to unfair economic advantages for foreign airlines that threaten the jobs of all U.S. pilots who serve communities across our nation. We need the U.S. government to balance the equation and give U.S. airlines of every size the opportunity to benefit from fair competition. <laughs>